Hello guys and welcome to this x86-64 Linux assembly tutorial. This is another quite long tutorial, but we will get to actually coding in the next tutorial. So there's a lot of information to take in on this one, but we will start coding again in the next video. So first we're going to look at flags. Flags are like registers, except they only hold one bit each. They only hold a one or a zero, and that is either true or false. Individual flags are part of a larger register. So there's like a flags register, an E flags register, and each bit is a single flag. So some of the flags, you have the CF flag, which is our carry, the PF flag, which is our parity flag, the ZF flag, which is our zero flag. There's a bunch of different flags, but you don't for now, you don't really need to memorize any of these flags. Just know what flags are. So there's also pointers. Pointers are registers, so they hold some data, and they point to data, meaning when you point to something, that means you hold that thing's memory address. You don't hold its value, you hold the address and memory to locate it. So there's the RIP uh, register, the RIP pointer, which I put EIP and IP because EIP is a 32-bit version, and IP is the 16-bit version, but since this is, this is 64-bit, we're always going to be using the RIP version. This is the index pointer. It points to the next address to be executed in the control flow, which we will see in a little bit. There's the RSP, the stack pointer, the RBP, the stack base pointer. There's a lot of pointers. This isn't even all of them. So we'll be looking at these more in the future, but for now, just we're going to be talking about the RIP pointer. So what is the control flow? The control flow, all code runs from top to bottom by default. The direction a program flows is called the control flow. The RIP register holds the address of the next instruction to be executed. After each instruction is executed, it is incremented by one, making the control flow naturally flow from top to bottom. So as you can see in the hello world code, you got the move rx1, then the, the location of the uh, the start, this location in memory of the move rx1, I just denote it as an x. So after it executes this, it will increment x by 1. So the next time it executes, it'll execute from this address. So it will execute um, R, um, x plus 1. Then do x plus 2. Now, I do say increment by 1 and increment plus 1. That's just a way to think about it. It doesn't necessarily translate to that way in code. Some, some instructions may increment the RIP register by like 2 or by 3 or by 4 because like move RIX comma 1 will require more than one actual byte of data to represent it in uh, machine code. So the plus one, plus two, plus three isn't necessarily accurate, but it's just a way to think of it. So the control flow for this program just goes from start and it just goes straight down from top to bottom. That is because that is the default control flow. So we're going to look at jumps. Jumps can be used to jump to different parts of code based on labels. They are used to divert the, the control flow. So you can change the control flow of a program using jumps. So the general format of a jump is you type in JMP and you type in a label. So as you can see, I said st right after start, I said jump start. This will actually make the control flow change from a straight line top to bottom to actually a circle. This will get s this program will actually get stuck in an infinite loop because it'll jump to start, meaning the uh, control flow is diverted to go back up to start, but then it goes down again, and but then it sees, okay, I want to jump to start again. Then it goes down again, it sees, okay, I want to jump to start again. So it gets stuck in an infinite loop. So when you actually tell it to jump somewhere, jump to a memory address, it loads the value of that memory address, the label, into the RIP register. So you're essentially, when you call jump and then something after that, like jump underscore start, it's essentially just loading the memory address of underscore start into the RIP register. Comparisons allow programs to take different paths based on certain conditions. Comparisons are done on registers. 
The general format for a comparison is you type in CMP for compare, then you type in a register, comma, then a register or a value. So as you can see, I have compare the RAX register to 23, or compare the RAX register to the RBX register. After a comparison is made, certain flags are set, such as if A equals B, the zero flag is set. If A is not equal to B, the zero flag is reset, which reset it just makes means it's set to zero. Then no matter what you do, the comparison it's going to set the SF flag to the most significant bit of A minus B. Now you don't need to remember all this. Just remember that after you make a comparison, flags are set. After a comparison is made, a conditional jump can be made. Conditional jumps are based on the status of the flags. So remember how I said when you run the comparison, it changes the value of the flags. So since the conditional jumps are based on the values of the flags, you can run a conditional jump right after a comparison. So conditional jumps are written just like unconditional jumps. However, JMP is replaced by the symbol for the conditional jumps. Now here's all these jump symbols. So JE, so when we run compare AB, such as compare the RX register to 12, if A equals B, so if the value of the RX register equals 12, then we're going to, we're going to actually do this jump. If it's not, we're not going to do the jump. And then there's jump NE, which is it executes if A is not equal to B. And then there's jump J, JG, which is jump a is greater than B, then JGE greater than equal to B. There's also uh, JZ, which is if it's equal to zero. You got uh, ones for overflow and ones for signed. Now, by default, everything is signed, but you can specifically do unsigned jumps um, if by using these. So JA is just like JG, but it... Uh, treats the A and B value as if they're unsigned uh, bytes. But typically you want to use these. You typically don't want to use this middle column, but it's worth mentioning. So this code right here will jump to the address of the label, do this, if and only if the value in the RAX register equals 23. So we compare RAX to 23, and then we jump equals do this. So we jump to do this if rx equals 23. Now this next code will jump to the address of the label do this if and only if the rx value is greater than the value in the rbx register. So in this case we're comparing the rx register to the rbx register and then if it's greater than it then we're going to jump to do this. The, reg the default registers can be treated as pointers. To treat a register as a pointer, surround the register name with square brackets, such as RX becomes RX in square brackets. So as you can see, if we say move into RAX, comma RBX, that will just load the value in the RBX register into the RAX register. However, if you put square brackets around RBX, that loads the value the RBX register is pointing to into the RAX register. So it doesn't load the value of the RBX register into the RAX register. It loads the value it's pointing to. So it goes to the address stored in the RBX register. And from that address, it pulls out a value. And now we're also finally going to look at calls. Calls are and jumps are essentially the same. However, when a call is used, the original position the call was made can be returned to you using ret. In this modification of the hello world code, so this right here is just like our hello world code, the part of the code that prints hello world was moved into its own section, and that section was called. So as you can see, this part that prints hello world, I moved it down here under the label print hello, and then I simply say call print hello, and it will jump down to print hello, run this code, and when it sees rat, it jumps back. So it returns back to where I called it once it's finished. This is actually called a subroutine. When you take big blocks of code and move it into sections which you can call, that's called a subroutine.